Hello and welcome to the Kafisi Connect podcast, your source for a wealth of roundtable discussions on the workplace and business, as well as cultural news and trends from the diverse and dynamic continent of Africa. I'm your host, Georgia Weber, and today I'm really pleased to introduce Michael Finley, the Kenya country lead for NBA Africa. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, so g- give us a brief history of NBA Africa and how, how it's sort of evolved. It's a great question. So, so... I guess with the NBA, uh, the the former commissioner, David Stern, came as early as the 80s and uh, came back with different players um, at different times just for visits, came and met Nelson Mandela. And the story goes that, um, you know, Mr. Mandela was was a big advocate of sport and how what it could do for for people. And they had a conversation. And after that, uh, David Stern said, going to open an office on the African continent. We opened an office in 2010 in Johannesburg, which is where our headquarters is currently based. And um, since then, many things have happened. Um, you know, in essentially the NBA has invested all the way from grassroots level, so we have what I call our junior NBA programs, all the way up to four years ago, almost five years ago now, uh, we launched uh, a professional basketball league on the continent of Africa, which is the only league that the NBA owns outside of the United States called the Basketball Africa League. So that is an ecosystem that has been put together so a young African can enter the game early. There are more opportunities, not enough yet, clearly, but a, a young person on the continent can enter the, the game uh, and can go be identified and go, can go all the way up to a professional league on the continent. And, of course, there are opportunities all around the world for, around the game. So, so that's a brief history of, of NBA Africa. Which you know, really since 2010, uh, we've been physically on the continent. And, and yeah. how much kind of talent are you kind of are you seeing coming through? I mean, obviously, are you are you are you operating across all African nations? Yes. And the talent that is coming through is. So I'm I'm smiling because you know, uh, uh, the talent is immeasurable. Uh, this is you know I've been saying this for over 20 years. This is the largest talent pool for the game of basketball, for many things, obviously, but for the game of basketball on the planet Earth, which is the continent of Africa. Uh, If you look at the last six uh, years of the NBA, the MVP voted the best player uh, in the league and arguably the best player in the world. Three of those six years has been an African. Uh, Joel Embiid uh, two years ago, and then um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and so uh, who's Nigerian descent. So, so, and there are a host right now. Ten percent of the NBA, four hundred and fifty players, uh, just under just at ten percent of the NBA, have one parent or both parents wow. born on the continent of Africa. So, ten percent of our league, not African American, which is a higher seventy percent, uh, but African, ten uh, percent. And so what are the kind of major challenges that you sort of um, you find? What are the kind of limiting factors, would you say, that you see? Is it like access to courts, access to, I mean, what are the, what are the limiting factors? You well, you hit right, right on yeah. the first one, Georgia, which is infrastructure. Yeah. Right? Um, the, the first thing you, you have to have is the infrastructure for the game to grow. The demand is bursting out of the seams. Uh, you have, you know, young people live on their devices, right? Everything on their device speaks to one of the tenets that surrounds not only basketball but the NBA, which is fashion, lifestyle, music, sport, um, you know, you name it, a popular culture. And so so the desire, the demand for the game is just off the charts um, as a result of that. But what we need is infrastructure. We need to, to continue to build infrastructure. We need to work with governments to commit to building the infrastructure and and. It has historically been looked at as by, by African governments, it's safe to say, as, as a hobby, right? Sport is a hobby. Basketball is a multi, multi-billion dollar business everywhere on the wor- uh, around the world. It, it, it can't not be in the place where the largest talent pool exists. So infrastructure, uh, access to opportunities for young, for, for elite talent, which is something we also focus on. Um, and, you know, but, but it all starts with infrastructure. And so, well, how do you kind of contact those communities? Is it through schools, or is it is it is, is, if you've got a program kind of in place that's empowering the communities to kind of embrace the NBA, embrace basketball? Sure. So, so that's a good question. I, look, it's if it's a specific program, 
then it's communicating with the basketball community and the larger community via the network on the ground in those communities. As an example, uh, I'll explain what we're doing about to do with Safaricom, and that'll ex- give you an idea. So, so, but but that's the first thing. And then the the second part is, you know, like I said, if they have access, they're able to find what's going on and they're able to follow. But they need access. Um, they need the ability to walk out and play on a court. Um, and so, so that's that's sort of our our focus, as I mentioned before, is to is to build that. Now, if you look at an example like Safaricom, what we're doing is regional tournaments, and then we're doing players and coaches clinics, and then we're going to do a top one hundred camp. So, what does that mean? We're going to pick four regions where we're going to take a big tournament. We're going to invite up to 40 teams, 20 male, 20 female, and they're going to compete in four different regions. And then we're going to bring the champions to a region and compete for a championship. Now, through the federation, the Kenya Basketball Federation, through the Kenya Secondary School Sports Association with the schools, we reach out and let them know that this opportunity will be available. And then we build the networks that way. So it's using the existing infrastructure in Kenya, which, uh, which to our benefit is actually very robust, okay. just needs some, um, some support and some uh, you know, leadership in certain areas, and it's, it's set to kind of take off. I mean, because sport itself is generally like such a, uh, a great discipline for children generally, not just ending up in, in, you know, in playing, playing basketball. Sure. But you know, sport can bring so many other benefits to enhance and impact, you know, in, in enhance people's lives. Yes. Are you finding that there's a kind of people who come through the programs they they continue into basketball? Is it very focused, or do they kind of go off into other elements, maybe physiotherapy or kind of different? Is is that what you're finding, or you? It's a very focused kind of program, and you're with a focus on sending these players to the US eventually. No. So so. That's a very, you know, once again, good question. So, look, the as a business, our focus is to create as many fans as possible, right? Now, as we, do, you know, give opportunities, the main objective is f- create fans. Right. Now, you have a, statistically, I think it is, you have a better chance of being struck by lightning than making it to the NBA. But if we find elite players, if we find talent, when we find talent, and we found them, we, yes, we try and get them into spaces where they can pursue their craft, where they can, you know, pursue their passion, and use it to get an education, use it to, you know, do whatever it is that they would want to do. Now, when we find the elite players, and you put them on the platform, it's really putting the systems in place to support them, and then it's up to them, right? But that's not our that's a byproduct of what, right. of what we yeah. do, and we love for it to happen. It does happen simply because the talent's here. Um, but our goal is really, you know, I use this example. If you have 1,000 football fan, fans, 700 may be EPL fans, 100 might be the local Kenyan League fans, or another 100 might be you know, Bundesliga or uh, the French League or you know, uh, some, uh, the fans of these different leagues. That may be their their number one, and then they have a ranking. If you have a thousand basketball fans, all one thousand of them are going to be NBA fans, right. right? And so our goal is to, as a business, is to grow the fan base. Um, and through that, you know, the beautiful thing about basketball, any sport, but if you get enough young people into the game, by the time that young person goes from, let's say, playing at ten years old to graduating from high school, and let's say they play eight years of basketball or any sport, like I said, but the way we look at it is that young man or woman will have had mentors, they will have had discipline, they will have learned about winning, mm-hmm. losing, mm-hmm. hard work, sure. right? Yeah. All these, the tenets, team the work. life skills, teamwork, yeah. all the things you need to be a better citizen, to be, uh, and to be successful in life. And so I think that's, you know, the beautiful thing about it is that that's the outcome, uh, and that's where our focus is, is to create as many of those opportunities for as many young people as possible. Um, it helps our business currently, 
And in the long term, it'll help our business. But more importantly, it will help, you know, tens of thousands, eventually millions of, of young, young people. Do you find at all that you sort of struggle, especially, I suppose, in a country like Kenya, where there's such a, a rich history and heritage of, of, of um, long distance running? So some of those athletes, obviously, you know, you're, it must be difficult to kind of turn them away to a new sport like basketball, mm-hmm. when actually the country has got such a kind of success story, you know, in the in the long distance on in long distance running, or maybe even football, which you know I know that most people have a kind of European football team that they support. Mm-hmm. Is that something you struggle with, or it's that's not something that you see happening? I wouldn't say struggle with it. I think it's it's amazing, right? It's it's uh, you know it's it's outlets, it's opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody's not a runner. Um, you know, football dominates in terms of popularity, um, but that's the only mass participation sport that is available for young people, right? So if you look at, there, there are only a few mass participation. Mass participation, football, right? You just need space. Mm-hmm. You can make your own ball, you know, you can, to start. Basketball is similar. I mean, my first basketball court or hoop, I took a bicycle a tire in the countryside where I grew up, and I tore the spokes out of it, Nailed it up against a tree on a piece of wood. That was my first basketball hoop. And by the time I would, st- you know, after a while, you had to go down in a little dip to get to the basket because we had run so much. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, we need mass participation sports for young people. Um, and so, no, we don't see that as a threat. Uh, obviously, we want to carve out some of those fans that are football fans, et cetera. Um, runners are a different athlete, right? Um, and, and the key is, if I put a basketball court in the same community, does that young person gravitate towards basketball or does that young person gravitate towards running or football? Or I think there's, there's what, over 50 million people in Kenya, we, and not enough have opportunities to play organized sports. So, yeah. And how about um, girls as well? How are, how are you um, encouraging them to participate? So the beautiful thing is we have our we we have a, a professional women's league, the WNBA, which has shot to international fame recently. I mean, it's it's oh, it's twenty seven years old, but now you know the women are flying private. They are earning major salaries. The TV deals, some of their games are being watched more than some of the NBA games. So the the, the level of talent has just exploded. So. There are not many other sports that have that. Our our split we're really proud of is higher for male female participation than any other sport. So if you look at, you know, for every thousand football players, if you look at the split in number of girls to boys, it's very low. Whereas basketball, you know, we're we're in the thirty percentile. Now our goal as the NBA, as NBA Africa, is to have fifty percent participation from girls. Um, in, in the next 10 years. Wow. So we have a specific program called HTTP, Her Time to Play. Okay. We bring WNBA players to the continent all the time to encourage, motivate. We run a Basketball Without Borders program, which is the elite camp, basketball camp in Africa, and it has been since 2002. We run it every year in Africa. Some of the players that have come from that camp, Joel Embiid, MVP two years ago, came as a skinny kid, you know, from Cameroon like 13 years ago. The year after him, Pascal Siakam plays for the Toronto Raptors, came, someone just identified him, he came at the camp, he moved. Now, that camp started in 02, and it was 100 boys. The camp now is only 60 players, 30 boys, 30 girls. Um, And so, you know, it's, uh, it is, it is, a, and almost, you know, I could arguably say the top priority for the NBA to get more girls into the game. Yeah, and uh, create opportunities for them. The great thing here in Kenya, so BWB, we just ran in August. There are only 30 females from over 20 countries that are invited to that camp. Two of the girls were Kenyan this year. Um, you know, two out of 30. Yeah. Sorry. And, uh, and then just around that same time, the best, one of the best, I would say the best, most, the most talented female player that I've seen in my 15 years of coming in and out of working in basketball in Kenya, the most talented female that I've ever seen, Kenyan, uh, Medina Okot, 
she just left a few months ago. We, you know, and she's at Mississippi State University, one of the top female basketball programs uh, in America. And so, yeah, our focus is, is girls. It's heavy on getting girl, more girls to play the game and to coach and to referee and everything else. So we have referees in the BAL. We always have female referees. We've had female coaches. But what, what we can control are the referees, the player. That's what we, we push on every front. So if I was a young kid listening to this podcast, yes. how, what would you say to me to try and just get started? Or to try and, you know, what are the things I might be able to do in order to tip my skills a little bit? Right. So the, so if I'm... I guess if if I'm if I'm a young if it's a young person that just wants to enter the game. I know I'm not young. I'm not that. Well, you know. I don't want to have that discussion because <laughs> if you're not, then I got uh, yeah. I don't want to talk about what so I am. You're talking to the ten year old me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if there's a young person out there, you know, the first thing is how do you access the game? You know, look in your community, look at the schools, look at the individuals. The, in Kenya, there are many coaches that played who are developing the game in their communities, running their own little small academies. Um, now, if you're already in the game and you want to get better, the, the beautiful thing is there's so many things that didn't exist years ago that self-teaching tools, drills, oh, right on YouTube. Uh -huh. So, And the key to getting better is, one, putting time in every single day, a little bit of time every single day, and, and making sure that it's literally... A, getting better, doing something to get better every single day, right? So, and you can learn those things online. Now, beyond that, like I said, there, there are over 70 what we call academies in and around Nairobi. Wow. And these are young people who played, who maybe in their community, they still love the game. They're trying to get a side hustle. They got parents that'll pay for their kids to train with them, you know, a couple of times a week or whatever. Um, so you find those individuals who are teaching individual skill because individual skill is the way to get better at the game, putting time in. Like if your team only like in Kenya, high school basketball formerly only runs in the public schools or the government schools from Jan to April. So we're try working to try and extend that opportunities to play beyond that. But if you're only playing in that window, you have to do other things on your own to get better. Right, that's the well, only dedication. Way. Right, right. Focus. Discipline. Yeah, discipline. Yes, yes. Um, so what can we look forward to in the kind of near future? What are, Kenya or? Yeah, well, Kenya, maybe start Africa. with Kenya first and then we can kind of expand. So, you know, we, so MBA Kenya, we've, uh, we started here formally in January after a launch uh, where we, where President Ruto hosted us. And so we've been here one year. Now, we've got, as I mentioned, we've got a high school program coming with a partner, as I mentioned, um, that we're going to be running in regions, et cetera. Uh, we've got Opportunity International, an NGO, just committed to building a basketball court in an area here called Banana at a school. Um, we'll be doing, we've done, just built a court at Kenya Academy of Sport, you know, for elite player development. Where, where they, and this is all NBA funded? This is NBA and NBA partner right. funded, okay. right? Yeah. So, uh -huh. so the Safaricom High yeah. School program, right. sure. the... Yeah. Those things. So we've got, we just committed, our deputy commissioner of the NBA, the number two person in the league, um, was here uh, October 8th and 9th. And we announced a partnership where our games are airing on NTV, our, our free to air. They're also airing on ESPN if you have DSTV. So we have that. We've announced that partnership and we're looking at doing bigger things with media houses here. Um, so there's that's one. The, um, the courts, our deputy commissioner committed to building 100 basketball courts in Kenya yeah. of the 1,000 that we're building on the continent over the next decade. So, so we are pushing now to get other partners involved to help us not only get to 100 but exceed that number um, so that the game can, can, can take off here. Um, and so, yeah, we have other partners that we'll be announcing very soon. Uh, with different structures. We have a program called NBA Weekend right. where we're going to do a lifestyle basketball event. We're looking for a venue in and around Nairobi where we can do something that's NBA, not an NBA game, uh -huh. but an NBA atmosphere with local teams. Some teams may be coming from our academy to play against the top team here. So we're looking at different formats, but we're going to invest in that. Um, and then the season just started, which is a season... Unlike any other, 
Um, it's you know it just started in October, runs now through until April in the playoffs into the finals, and we've got all these incredible players in the league now. These young superstars, you know, Victor Wimbenyama, seven foot four. He's like every, a lot of people expect him to take over the league and be the face of the league. Anthony Edwards. So we've got all of these players, and you still got LeBron and Kevin Durant and these guys playing uh, night in and night out. So we're just set up for a great season, and and these are all things that are going to contribute to the growth of the game here in Kenya and in, the, in East Africa. Amazing. So if I've got a, a, an 11-year-old yes. who is keen for basketball to go and watch it, which he is. Okay. In person in or? Kenya. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What so do I, What do I do? Right. So, so I think... One is, is as the junior NBA programs come online, uh, try to get him into that, okay. into those where they're, you know, unfortunately they're not as vast and broad as we would like them to be yet, but find those initially, find where those are and get them into those. We are doing a series of coaching clinics, players clinics that will be pushed out on social media, follow those and try to con- participate in those. But to go and watch live basketball in Nairobi, it's the local league, the the Kenya. Uh, it's called KBF. It's KBF is the federation, and it's called the KBL, Kenya Basketball League. I believe that's what it is. They've got an incredible uh, competitions that happen here at Nyayo Stadium. Yeah. It's a small venue. You can't get in there for the big games. It's too packed, and it'll be, it's a great atmosphere for an eleven year old to come watch a game and f- and like. You know, because you're, you're, yeah, you're literally so right there. And yeah. these are not, these are not NBA players, but these are, these are, you know, some of these guys played briefly in the NBA. Some played overseas. Many went to college and played, you know, four years of college in the U.S. So, so it's really a quality level. The Nairobi City Thunder is sort of the darling team now. They're, tr- they're now in the top 16 uh, or in the sweet 16, as we say, to compete. To, to make it to the BAL, and we think they got a really good chance at it. So that's the team that everybody's going to watch now, uh, and when they play against Equity Bank or, uh, or Kenya Ports Authority, those are big games that you have to try to get tickets to get into. So I would say that's where he should go. Fabulous. Yeah. Oh, lots of advice there. Yeah, Michael, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. Thank Jeffy you. Luck. Look forward to seeing some Kenyan and other players making it the NBA. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This is great. Thank you.